So my name is Dave Wiesentiner, and I am the director of strategy for both data platform and the dynamics business inside corporate accounts at Microsoft. This is my partner in crime. So uh, good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Christoph Herbeck. I look at the uh, worldwide business strategy for uh, Azure and EMS, uh, based in Redmond in the US. And, and today we would like to talk to you, it sounds like super like robotic, but uh, you guys are good? Yeah. It's like karaoke night for you over there. <laughs> um, we would like to talk to you today about uh, selling beyond IT, which is all about uh, how we create uh, new revenue streams for our businesses uh, by talking to the business decision makers in our customer accounts. And, and we, we started on this journey with Dave like a year and a half ago. Um, whereas I was looking at our like uh, Azure revenue, uh, how to get to quota, how do we beat AWS, trying to understand how these guys have been creating a $6 billion business for AWS uh, in a few years, right? And, and, and it became apparent, right, that, that, that they were pretty good at capturing revenue, not only from the IT people that we are experts are engaging, Microsoft and partners, uh, but also they were pretty good at talking to the VP of sales, the CFO, VP of marketing, and, and, and getting, getting deals and, and uh, direct from these guys and sponsored from these guys. So let's figure out who, um, it's funny, as we, as we were asked to do this session uh, for Future Decoded, they said, what's the largest group you can do? And I said, well, uh, over about 450 people, it gets a little marginal because the people don't participate enough. So it's, it's funny that we have uh, such a small group. But it's better that way because what we'd like to do is just make this a super interactive session. Who is, uh, who's a sales manager? Who manages sales teams in here? Okay. Who is the owner of a, of a partner? Who's in a, a partner executive? Okay. And then who is a salesperson? All right. So that's, that covers most of the three groups. So the thing that we'll cover with you is, is since we're a small enough group, we'll, we'll cater to all three of those groups. If you're an owner, um, we have a lot of our biggest and most aggressive, not necessarily um, just our biggest, but our most aggressive partners are trying to make this transformation with their own sales teams. How do you do it, right? Probably everybody in the room has spent money on training. Oh, I'm going to really get great at this, or I'm going to go get a business degree, or I'm going to take some online courses. Um, if you're a salesperson, the, the, the things that prevent you from making the transformation from selling to IT to selling outside of IT are, are a couple of things. One, you, know, you don't have the time to do it. You're already fully busy, and you don't want to offend or alienate that IT relationship that you already have. If you're a sales manager, it's all about how do you drive change management. So we'll sort of talk about those three things. If you have questions, just stop us and ask us. It's a small enough group that we can, we can do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to introduce you to someone, okay? So we want to introduce you to Jane. Jane is a typical CFO uh, inside of one of our corporate accounts. Um, she thinks about a few things, right? She thinks about I have internal processes that are just dis disconnected from each other. Um, I, I need to improve my ability to have deeper financial knowledge into my company so I can know where to make changes and how do I make actionable decisions from the information that I have. I also know that um, constantly from the board of directors I have increased pressure to do more with less. That's certainly just a business maxim no matter what our position is or where we are, but particularly for her, she has a tremendous amount of pressure to reduce spending in other areas so that they can either drive into innovation, you know, put more money into customer experience, or frankly, margins are just getting compressed and they can't do as much business anymore. In creating this methodology, what we did, rather than two guys sitting in Redmond, Washington going, hmm, I wonder what a CFO thinks about. I bet they think about this. We went out and interviewed CFOs all over the world, heads of marketing all over the world, vice presidents of sales, and heads of marketing. And we found out that after many, many conversations with each of those roles, the kinds of things that are business pain points for them begin to converge and you end up with a fairly, a fairly short list of things that are common, whether you are the CFO of a teddy bear factory or the CFO of a missile factory, right? So we wanna be able to give the salespeople in the room the ability to have that conversation in a fairly succinct manner that is very respectful of the time and the portfolio of business that they have to, have to run. When I talk about a, a broken internal process, this is what I think about. I used to, uh, my background is in sales management, and I used to run a high-end cycling company. 
And what would happen is people would come in, we had a big distributor in the UK, people would come in through the internet and sort of, I wanna research the product and I'm gonna compare your bike against other bikes and I would capture them in my marketing web. And then I would send them out all kinds of things about how great their life is gonna be after they buy one of these $14,000 bikes. Invariably, it was better. Then they would buy that bike and I would have them in my CRM system. Anybody uh, Salesforce partner? Good to know. Anybody use Salesforce as their practice? Okay, we're gonna mark you on the way out. Um, I was a Salesforce customer, made that buying decision on about four different occasions, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I capture them on my CRM system, now I know something about them as a customer, but because they were racing bikes, they sometimes broke. People would get these high-end mountain bikes and just jump them off a cliff because they would see a Mountain Dew commercial and think they could do everything. They would then make a warranty claim, I would have a lifetime warranty, and I would replace that bike. But they're all hand-built one at a time in the US, so they're extremely expensive to make. What would happen is I would warranty this fellow's bike, he would get a new frame, and what would he do with his old frame? He would sell it on eBay. Hey, anybody want this? Maybe you can get some parts off of it, something. This guy here, sorry you're the bad guy today, he would buy that frame off of eBay and call me, Ellsworth Handcrafted Bikes, and say, oh, you're a terrible bike, it broke, and I want a replacement, you know who I am, I'm a good customer, but he bought it off of eBay. Because my warranty system was not connected with my CRM system for managing customers, was not connected with my marketing system, I had no idea if he was Robin Williams, who bought 12 bikes from me, or if he was Mr. eBay, who never actually bought the bike from me and couldn't produce an original receipt. So what I had was, imagine, $14,000 bicycle. Who's my competitor? It's not another bicycle company. It's Mercedes and Maserati and Neiman Marcus and these very high-end brands, Bentley. Those are the kinds of other brands they're associated with. So when I have a disconnected internal process, it means my customer journey is incredibly lumpy and disconnected as well. That's the kind of things that this CFO thinks about. What does she not think about? Well, that's the heart of the matter, guys, right? It's where we're here today is, as a CFO and one of our corporate account customers, I don't have an Azure problem, right? I don't have an EMS problem. I, have, I don't have any problem that I think of a Microsoft or an IT solution as the solution to that problem, right? When we together market to uh, these roles and these customers, none of that marketing content is, is relevant to them. It's, it's even worse. It's like everything we do at Microsoft to equip our sellers, to ready our sellers, to equip you guys as partner organizations and all the stuff we give to you through MPN and all that goodness about the product and how to pitch the product. All of that is completely irrelevant to have a conversation that is, re that is meaningful to that CFO, right? And, and this is what we want to take you guys through today, right, is really how do we uh, transform personally as sellers in that industry to be able to, be able to go after that opportunity, right? It's not, it's not a product talk. It's not um, a bunch of stuff that would, you would find on a SharePoint and, 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 and decks and documents to, to train your sales team with. It's how do we personally transform to acquire the skills to be able to be relevant to these guys, right? And it's even worse than that. It's day. even worse than that. She has a quarterly lunch with the person from Oracle, the Oracle partner. She gets a newsletter from salesforce.com and that newsletter from salesforce.com partner says how to reorganize your territories without compromising your highest performers. Well, that sounds pretty interesting to me, right? As a sales leader, that's what I wanna know about. This is a quote from a CFO. I've never met anybody from Microsoft and I don't know who my Microsoft partner is. You wanna hear the rest of the quote? which is during the interviews of the CFO, he says, I never met anybody from Microsoft, I don't know who my Microsoft partner is, but I pay a million dollars a year for some product called TrueUp, and I don't even know what that product does for us, right? So, the fact of the matter is, 40% of the time, this is a, a statistic from worldwide, 40% of the time, the IT department reports to the CFO. So let's just do a really quick raise of hands. Those of you who are owners, you're sort of disqualified from this test, but sales managers and sellers, just be honest here. And in fact, if you're an owner, you, you know, if you're an executive, you can answer too. Who's comfortable, if you're a salesperson, answer it for yourself. If you're a leader or a, a sales manager, answer it for your team. Who's comfortable sending either yourself 
or your, one of your good salespeople out to meet with the vice president of sales. Have a business value conversation with the VP of sales. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. Who is comfortable sending that salesperson out to meet with the head of marketing? One, two, okay, so it's, this is about worldwide statistic. Three, back in the back. <laughs> what if I said the chief financial officer? Who's comfortable sending their salesperson to one, two, three, okay. That's about what the statistics are. So three people in the entire room are comfortable either sending, the, if they're a salesperson going out themselves or sending their salesperson out. But what we just found is almost half the time, and it's higher in the UK, half the time that CFO owns all of that IT budget. So even if we don't wanna sell anything different to new audiences, we have a risk that getting our contracts renewed and approved because we don't have that right relationship inside the account. Make sense? Except for you, right? You feel comfortable with it all, so that's good. And that's, you're, you're sort of the worldwide average that we get very few people who do it. We, we actively avoid trying to meet with the IT department. Okay, is that a change or have you always, okay. It is a change now because the market for us has changed and we've identified that they no longer are the ultimate decision maker and buying a fleet of vehicles might be more important than upgrading infrastructure. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely right. As a VP of sales, um, buying salesforce.com four times, how many times did I call IT before I made the purchase? One time. And that call was this. Hey, I don't know what our email system is. It was Outlook, by the way. I don't know what our email system is, but does this thing, uh, Salesforce, work with that? Oh, it does? Okay, great. Click. Salesforce, bring it on. Give me $300,000 a year worth, please. Love it. Okay? And then they brought it on, and that's a whole different story. But we have people making decisions that our IT contacts are not even aware of. Right, and, and, and to be frank, it's not all, always that extreme, right? But um, all the analysts agree with that, right? IDC, Gardner, Forrester, you name it, right? They all agree with that. There's a trend in our industry, on our market, that IT budgets are shifting out of the hands of IT. Right, it's about 60% on average of that IT budget that is no controlled or severely influenced by people who are not in IT. Uh, if you look at this graph, there's about 20% of the IT budget in our customers that is still controlled by CIOs and IT decision makers, right? This is mostly about keep the lights on, on like basic infrastructure, maintenance stuff, probably projects that us, Microsoft and our partners, we're not super excited. This is, this, these are not the innovation projects that we want to drive and grow our business practice around, right? Um, there's gonna be more and more, on a, on, a, on a country like the UK, it's probably way more than that, right? It's 14% average worldwide, but the more mature the, the, the country, the economy, uh, the higher the number is, our projects are solely in the hands of a business decision maker. Like the, Dave's example about like Salesforce, just not consulting anyone in IT uh, to buy that sales automation system, right? But it's true from CMOs buying uh, a database or uh, a website, an e-commerce platform to run their marketing stuff, right? And, and there's still a big majority of IT projects that IT is gonna have the role of conducting, implementing, but they're not gonna be able to make a decision on, on buying this or consuming more of that uh, without a BDM, without a business decision maker, completely in the loop and completely influencing the decision, right? And, and this, is, this is where we need to be able to influence. It's not necessarily stop selling to IT and sell systematically only to BDMs, however, it might make sense for some businesses. But the basic core, the basic minimum is how we're able to influence the BDMs in our accounts uh, when, it, when it resolves around these big projects that we don't want to lose, that we want to be part of, right? Um, even worse than that, again, you're the worst guy today. <laughs> I'm the worst, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, that's the thing, is they're, they're just not happening with us. Our, our customers, I think there's a misperception sometimes on the part of um, Microsoft and some of our partners that oh, this is gonna be a brand new conversation. I'm, you know, I'm getting geared up for it. How do I train my salespeople to do that? The truth of the matter is, is our, our customers are already having these conversations. They're having them all the time. In fact, the CFO that I mentioned to you, um, he said, you know, it's, 
I'm not saying all these things to make you feel bad, although he clearly he did. He said, I'm saying them because I bet Microsoft has seen hundreds and hundreds of companies just like mine and seen exactly the same kinds of problems I struggle with every day. And I bet you have a great perspective you could share with me. So they're sort of hungry to, to, to have that conversation. I don't know what your experience is with your sales team, but what we hear routinely, we've, we've run about 3,000 salespeople, both partner and Microsoft uh, uh, salespeople through this program. And it's, we'll either do it through online training or, or live um, in a big workshop. And what they say when they come back is, that was the easiest conversation I've ever had. We just, we just had a conversation. Here's the greatest fear. Okay, so you're a high-powered bike owner, right? And you, the reason is because you're a CFO. So we go in and meet, and what is a salesperson's greatest fear is that I meet with the CFO, and the CFO says, Dave, I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here because I have got a tax preparation issue. What's happening is I'm not able to take advantage of long-term um, tax extension issues over a five-year period, so I need to move several capital expenditure items to another side of my P&L. Glad you're here. What would you tell me to do? Oh, my God. What's going to happen to that salesperson? He's going to... His head will explode and he'll catch on fire, right? That, that nothing good can come from that. But that conversation is never going to take place, is it? They don't, they don't want to have that conversation. They want to know what other CFOs and other rocket manufacturing companies have done to solve a problem about employee retention. Because it's very hard to retain these high technical employees in their business. What do you do about that? Let's talk to the head of HR because they, they seem to have an issue there too. Or I'll give these guys like uh, the Amazon example as well. I think it's interesting. Um, so at Microsoft, we have this tool uh, that sniffs uh, websites, so we understand which of our customers are actually using Amazon technologies, right? And we put them together the list. I was very surprised with the name of customers that came up on the list. Right? Like, okay, I know these guys. They're like pretty good customers of ours. We have a great relationship with IT. Why? Why did that happen, right? Why did they? Did, decided to buy stuff from Amazon and did not even put us in the loop. Or like, so we call them, say, hey, man, like, how, why? Uh, you should have given me a chance at least to pitch my Azure stuff, right? And, and like, nine, I think it's 98%. 98% of the CIOs we talked to of the list of all the Amazon customers told me, your data is wrong. We never bought anything from Amazon ever, right? And of course they did. But the IT guy we talked to wasn't aware of it. It's even worse, like my business and the Azure business, on a segment like corporate accounts worldwide, 12,000 customers of ours are Azure customers. None of my sales guys know who they are, right? Because when they talk, they, they haven't sold that, that, uh, these Azure bits to these customers for sure. And uh, when they talk to IT in their accounts, that IT person doesn't know whether that, as a company, they bought anything in the cloud, right? So cloud is in like, if you think this is a big challenge for us and a big opportunity as well, cloud accelerates, accelerates this like a ton, right? The ability for a business decision maker who sort of knows what they want to go and purchase an IT solution or an IT service with a credit card online is oversimplified with cloud, right? And that happens every day now, right? That happens every day where we see these small transactions starts with like, $2,000, $5,000, but grows pretty fast um, of like business decision makers buying IT services. So think of our typical conversation model, right? We find technical problems inside of our account and then we create a technical solution for them. You know, if we're really good, if we're really good as a salesperson, we, we ask for upward sponsorship and say, oh, could you introduce me to the CFO? But that depends a lot on our, on our IT contacts' credibility in the business, their bandwidth, and they may be threatened, right? And that's, that's one of the issues that we run into. Hey, this is my kingdom. My kingdom has been shrinking. Now, if I introduce you to the head of, uh, you've been the CFO, the head of marketing over here, then my kingdom gets even smaller. And we focus on IT related products and features. Where we want to transition the conversation to is this value conversation, right? Where we understand the customer's needs. So, well, let's do a little, a little quiz here. Think of not your very best customer. Think of like your number three customer that you have, whether you're a salesperson or it's your organization. And you got to be honest here. If you know their top three strategic initiatives as a business, raise your hand. 
This is your number three customer in your whole business. If you know their top three strategic initiatives they're trying to accomplish as a business. Okay, you guys are not unusual at all. We have sales teams all over the world. If we don't know what they're trying to do, how do we help them with their business pains? That's a, that's a good litmus test, right? As you're walking through the halls and you're talking to your salespeople, that's a good thing to ask. Hey, tell me, you, you do business with AG Farber, tell me a little bit about um, what are they trying to accomplish this year? What's their number one goal they're trying to accomplish this year? What are their top three strategic initiatives? If people don't know what they are, there's no way you're gonna move out of IT because it's all about our ability to be relevant to an audience that currently thinks Microsoft and our Microsoft partners are just here to talk about tech. And when we open our mouths and we start saying, hey, you know, I'd really like to work with you on your complex licensing, and interestingly enough, if you do some hyper-threading on your virtualized machines, you could save a lot of money. Right? Instantly, I say as the head of sales or a CEO or a CFO, you do not speak to me. You belong with the IT folks, so I'm just turning you off. Right? And so it's that ability to claim relevance that's just so incredibly hard. And that's why what we've created here is not it's not a deck. It's not a bunch of emails. It's not something you just walk out and go, okay, great, team, we're gonna do this, send out these emails, here's the new campaign we're gonna do. It's all about that personal transformation. And it's more about change management than it is stuff. And your ability, if you're a seller, to personally transform your skill set at talking to another person, or if you're a sales leader, how to allow people to try and fail and try and fail and try and fail, because I'll tell you, when they try it, and we watch people all over the world get up in front of us and go, okay, I'll be the CFO, you be the sales person, let's see how you do. And it's, it's just tough. The first few times, it's like riding a bike and you fall down and you scrape your knee. The second time, you still fall down and scrape your knee. But the third time, you sort of wobble down the street and you're okay. And it's that process of change management and saying, okay, I'm going to personally commit to making one call a week to a CFO. I'm going to learn what's a relevant conversation with those people. I'm going to understand how to uncover those business pain points and have a conversation about that. And then I'm going to bring my technical team in behind me to design a, what that solution looks like to that particular business pain point. If that technical team shows up and they're, they're, you know, the salesperson leaves and the technical team starts saying three boxes of Azure and nine cans of SQL, again, you're, you've, you've demonstrated you're irrelevant. So this is a, a very different conversation than any of us have ever had. And to be to be honest, like it's a bit harder for us, Microsoft, than it is for like companies like Salesforce, who's, who have been doing that for many years, right? There's still this like brand issue, the perception from these business decision makers that Microsoft is all about IT. Um, so we might have a bigger gap, bigger step um, to uh, strive change that perception from these customers that a. Um, uh, as a business, Microsoft and our partners, we have solutions for you as a business user to solve the problems that are problems of your, of your role. Not IT problems, but like business problems. So it started with that. Like how do we, how do we get these sellers started, right? Whether they're Microsoft sellers, we're putting a lot of pressure on these Microsoft sellers to be able to do that. So as you, as you work with them, uh, you're gonna hear it from them uh, that, that they want to they want your help, they want your support to go after uh, these customers and these roles. And, and why we're here today is we also think it's super important as a player in this industry that, we, that you guys are able to develop these skills, right? And, and it's, it might start with just like sending a CFO some email, right? Um, and and that, that's an example we got from uh, a CFO that we interviewed, say, okay, got this email, was pretty good. Uh, not the best email I've ever received, but it made his point of like, hey, I'm trying to talk to you. Uh, let me show you why I'm relevant. I, I understand uh, your business. I would like to spend some time with you discussing your business issues, right? It's not about a product. It doesn't contain anything. Uh, I think it's pretty okay email. What's the problem with this email, you guys think? Anybody know the issue with it? It's a trick question. came from Oracle. So again, just because we're not great at it doesn't mean that our competitors are not great at it. Right, and that was our first learning with Dave is our customers are having these conversations with our competitors every day, right? 
they are not uh, surprised when they're engaged by an IT company anymore for that IT company wants to talk to them about business issues and how they might have solutions to these business issues, right? It feels weird uh, for Microsoft and, and some Microsoft partners to do that, but these guys are, do, are, are receiving these conversations from our competitors every day. And, and the second learning is most of them are actually frustrated not having these conversations with us, right? So a lot of our sellers are like, oh, I don't, I don't know if the CFO wants to talk to me, right? Most okay. of the CFOs we interview, they're like, of course I want to talk to you guys, right? I mean, you've been in this business for 30 years. You probably talk to a lot, a lot of other CFOs like me. You've probably seen your business, um, stuff that I'm facing every day, and how, and how you might have some insights for me on how to improve. Uh, you, just don't, you just don't approach me. Yeah, and your timing is really good. If this is a direction you want to go, do, uh, let me ask this question. Some of you are in here because you said, oh, that session sounds interesting and I'll just check it out. Some of you are in here because you go, yeah, this is really the, the direction that I want to go to change, the, change at least a portion, if not all of my sort of sales direction. Who is trying to change their sales direction right now and get more? Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll help you. Your timing is super good, and here's why. In the UK, the UK is probably the most advanced Microsoft subsidiary in terms of what we're doing. Every single one of their sellers has been through our extended live training, and they all have a mandate to go head down that road. Um, who, is, who is focused by industry? Anybody really key on industry, or will you go anywhere? That's a direction that Microsoft UK is starting to go to, especially in that corporate account space, is begin to say, okay, if you're in manufacturing, we need to talk, right? And if, we're, if you're in retail, then we need to talk because I think that's a new direction. So your timing is super good and get engaged with those Microsoft sellers and your PSEs to say, hey, I'm all in. I want to try and, and make this transition. How do we connect with your teams to have that same conversation? Because if our, our folks get good at it and your folks don't, then we have this disruption and it, and it breaks the trust of the customer, right? Again, if, if, when it can work the other way around. The partner walks in saying, Hey, let's talk all about um, how we're going to change your, uh, your employee recruitment for your North Sea oil operation. In fact, we have some data um, that will help you understand where the people with those particular skill sets around um, oil drilling offshore, where they reside everywhere in the world. And then from that, we can help you with um, designing sort of a social recruitment campaign to begin to target those people, even though they don't live anywhere near the UK. Oh, doesn't that sound great? And then the Microsoft person comes in behind you and says, SQL Azure, Azure, BDM, CRM, ERP. It, they break the trust between that conversation. So you may be the lead on that conversation. They may be in the lead on the conversation. But just sort of somebody needs to be the regulator of, of making sure everybody's saying the same thing. Okay, everybody good? All right. Okay, so we touched, we touched base also on one point is starting to like talk about that is how we're relevant to these customers. Uh, how we're relevant to the specific role the business decision maker has is how we create interest and we create an appetite for engaging a relationship, engaging a conversation, right? Um, so we wanted to show you that quick video, which is a video we initially shot as a, as a joke with Dave <laughs> to explain uh, sellers how you're, how you're not relevant by having an IT conversation with a business decision maker, right? So we actually picked one of the bell cards that we give our Microsoft sellers uh, that we make available to you guys as well on how you would pitch a product like Skype or Link, right? And how you use that language in a conversation with a BDM and how you're not building any relevance at all. So hopefully the sound works in the video. Dave, thank you for coming over. Uh, believe it or not, first time I meet someone from Microsoft, really excited with you guys uh, have in store to help me. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, my boss said that I, I ought to start reaching out to more CFOs, so thank you very much for, for taking time to talk to me, and <clears throat> I think I've got some really, some really great things to talk to you about. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, for example, you know, I, I'm sure you have some things you want to talk about, but first, I thought I would ask you a couple of questions, if that's okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you have a way for uh, 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 your users to um, communicate effectively across multiple platforms? Uh, go ahead, because I'm not really sure I fully. Well, let me ask you another question. Are you, are you being asked to, um, you know, make reductions and transformations in your communications bill? Uh, like, not really. That's more like the. Uh, from 
procurement guy? Because because I this is, I really want to talk to the CFO. I, I think I think you're, you're a decision maker, and I think we really have some great things for you. You know, have you ever thought about unifying all of your communications across all users? Never thought about that, Dave. No. Okay. Um, well, I would love to talk to you about our product Link, which does all of those things, and I would love to discuss with you, you know, some of the great things that Link does. Dave, I'm not sure I've ever heard of Link. I'm not sure I should. Well, no. What it does is, I mean, it has all these great features that you should know about. For example, it gives enterprise functionality that connects you and, and gives you instant uh, video and presence and IM across uh, all of your, what you would call your phone services. So really great functionality there that I, th I think you could use. How does that help me with my business? So another example is it has multi-party content controls and online meeting collaboration. Uh, really useful tools I think you'd find. I mean, it, it's how you would connect your employees. Yeah, well, it's probably very interesting. Maybe you should meet my uh, colleague, the director of IT, because these are not really topics I care about, honestly. Though. But it's ha it's an employee topic, and, and I think you're you're the one concerned about your employees, right? Well, sure, but this is this is product talk that honestly I don't relate to. No. Oh. So maybe let's shift gears a little bit if if you don't want to talk about. You know, do you have a strategy to transform your business to the cloud? Uh, maybe. Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, perhaps um, you know you, you're trying to figure out a way to address the the four megatrends. Uh, I'm not sure I follow you there, Dave. But I'm well, right. So, um, think about social collaboration. H have you started to re-envision how uh, you want to collaborate socially? I'm not even sure I understand these words put together. Well, these are these are really important terms that Microsoft is working on. We want to make sure that you come along for that journey with us. It's it sounds pretty good though, doesn't it? So the last thing that that I want to ask you about is is your customers. I'm not really sure, you know, kind of what your customer base looks like or or who it is you're really selling to, but um, I'm sure if you if you kind of educated me about that, we could probably help you make a, a a big impact with, with your customers. This is a bit disappointing because I, I thought you knew about my business. This is the only reason why uh, I was excited to meet together today. Well, I, I would love to learn about your business. I mean, really, uh, if you can tell me a little bit about your customers and how you interact with them, and um, you know, I don't know if, if delivery is a big important part of what you do, or uh, you know if what, it's Dave, services. I'm not sure I have time to put you up to speed on what our business is about. Hmm. Well, maybe you could point me to somebody that might be able to help me. Maybe the, the head of HR or, or the head of operations? Uh, I think you should do your homework before you come talk to us. Our competitors are, are, are doing that, so why not you? Uh, well, just, just trying to learn here. Just trying to learn. Uh, well, thanks for your time, and, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll do some work. And We've got another great product called CRM, and I'll do a little homework, but I'd love to talk to you about that later. Um, well, we'll contact you, Dave. Thank you. So hopefully it never goes that bad, right? Hopefully it never goes that bad. But those are, those are points that we've either taken from collateral that we're telling salespeople to say or from actual experiences, right? I went in, uh, a young sales guy got an appointment with the CEO and he said, Dave, got an appointment with the CEO, uh, would like to see if you'd go with me. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I am such a great trainer that he's taken my message and done great things with it. So we go in, I'm sort of excited. We have the day planned around this one meeting. And uh, we go in, and what's the first thing that he says to the CEO? This is where you guys say, he said this. He said, what do you, uh, what do, you do here? <laughs> what do you do? What do you make here? And no idea. He hadn't done any background preparation. The good news was we had the rest of the day off uh, to do whatever we wanted, because that meeting lasted about 80 more seconds from that point. But that's the thing. Our, our salespeople see this, and they go, oh. I might have said that. Oh, I probably did that one time, right? So we want to let them understand that it's okay. It's a transformation. It's a change. But it's having that, again, deciding that I'm going to have conversations that I'm not having today. And if I'm a manager of salespeople, what am I going to do? Right? I'm not going to just say, okay, guess what today? We're all calling on the CMO. So good luck. You've got the training. I'm giving the, the, the pitch. Off you go. Right? That's what we tend to do. So we need to pitch with those folks regularly. What are you going to say? Let's all talk about what we're going to say to the CMO. 
catch you in the hallway and I've got 20 pounds in my pocket, oh, that's like $8,000. But here's 20 pounds if you give me an awesome pitch to the CMO. And he gives it to me. Oh, okay, great. I, you know what I might say is I might say this or that. So they, it's something that they want to do, but they need a lot of support on, right? And if you're in your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team, if that's not the conversation you're having, if you're talking about only pipelines and true ups and licensing aspects, that's what they're going to focus on, right? They're going to focus on what their boss feels is important. And if their boss feels that licensing is important, they're going to talk about licensing. Right, so moving on, you guys are convinced at this point, so hopefully. Uh, so what we've done with Dave, uh, in order to help you guys get there, right? And like, wh wherever you are, if you're like you, sir, or you guys have decided as a company to say, hey, we want, we want to take to IT the best possible and shift our sales model where we talk to business decision makers from now on, where you're like only talking to IT these days, but you're convinced that, hey, we should probably diversify, diversify our risk. And, and build different relationships within our customers. Uh, wherever you are on this journey, uh, we created a, a training, a program with Dave to take sellers from wherever they are to be able to have a good conversation with a CFO, a good conversation with a VP of sales, and, 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 and build on that skill, right? So the training doesn't turn them into rock stars, but the training gives them the few solid blocks to get started and learn from that experience. It doesn't turn them into rock stars, but it turns them into a garage band. Right? <laughs> garage band. So let's build, let's build this out, because we've got about 12 minutes left. So what we want to do is not just convince you, but have you walk away with some tools that on Monday morning, you can start to either reach out to customers if you're a direct seller, or you can begin to put together a program for your team. Right, so we architectured this training and this methodology around three basic steps, right? First step is about preparing for the conversation, realizing that there are things that we need to know about the customer, we need to know about the role, we need to know about the person we're gonna talk to that are different than how we prepare for having an IT conversation about a product with an IT person. What are the three background things you wanna know before you talk to somebody, anybody know? You wanna know something about the industry, obviously, right? If I'm uh, working with Clarks, I wanna know something about that shoe industry, um, uh, wages in China are going up, so a lot of shoe companies are moving to Southeast Asia. Uh, it'd be interesting to know how, how could I help them with that transformation. Second thing is what? About, business. about the business, right. So I want to know about that individual company, right? Well, I understand that Clarks is a private organization, and they do a lot of charitable events in sub-Saharan Africa, and that um, uh, they are moving more and more into eco-footwear. What's the third thing that I want to know about? The act. You want, come on, you can just present with us. You, either you've taken this before. Or, and that's right, the actual person. So the industry, the company, and the person, right? Who's, uh, who's got a link, who does not have a LinkedIn account? Who does not have one? Okay, that's good. I think everyone in the, who has a LinkedIn Sales Navigator account? That's a premium version of LinkedIn. Anybody have that? Okay, you got it? Everybody else go out and buy it. It's expensive, but it's super cool. I want to look at all my accounts and I only want to look at the CMO of every manufacturing organization and how they're related to me and all the people that can link me to them. Oh, that would save me some time prospecting, right? So maybe you sign up for it for six months and you probably get everything that you need to know. But you need to have a way, Hoover's, LinkedIn, that you're not doing manual prospecting, right? Because if you have a thousand accounts, it's going to take you a tremendous amount of time to get through that. So you need to have a machine that begins to spit out who you're going to talk to because if he's the CFO, he's the head of marketing, he's the head of sales, and he's the head of, what do you want to be the head of? HR. You might want to be an HR guy. I'm not going to call all of those guys in one week. In fact, I'm not even going to call them all in one month. I'm going to call the head of sales, 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 the head of sales. And I'm going to get expert at that conversation. In fact, I'm probably only going to call those four heads of sales and manufacturing and get really good at that. So think about how you're going to programatize this rather than saying, all right, we're all going to talk to business decision makers. You've got to make it much more of a mechanism for your salespeople or else they'll fall apart and they'll spend all of their time prospecting and trying to figure out what that next conversation is. Make sense? All right. And, and on step two, I'll cover step two and three together. Step two is about how, as part of the methodology, we want to help sellers, Microsoft sellers, your sellers, conduct these conversations, right? And, and we, we are publishing a series of different guides um, that are gonna um, tell a seller 
hey, this is, this is how you need to talk to that role, right? So if you think about it, like we have a guide for a CFO conversation, right? This is what a CFO cares about. These, which is what a CFO is doing every day. These are probably the problems that the CFO faces from interviewing hundreds of CFOs and trying to understand, okay, what are the common denominator of CFO challenges they would like us to solve? And uh, what are the conversation topics that you probably want to cover with that CFO, right? A bit in a challenger sales, so I'm not sure you guys uh, know about this methodology called Any, challenger sales. Anybody taking right? the challenger sale training? Get the book, it's called the challenger sale, get the book and read it. If you have a chance to take the course, take it. It's incredibly disruptive in terms of that right. sales communication that you've had with your customers for the last 10 years. Which is, which is like a build on the classic solution sales uh, process where you're gonna say, okay, tell me all about your problems and when you give me that list of all the things that bother you, maybe hopefully have one of them that I can do something about. Uh, instead of going down that approach, Challenger Cell is all about say, hey, dear CFO, all the CFOs I talk to, they have this challenge, right? Uh, how, do you, how do you resolve this, right? And that, and that creates this like, thought-provoking question, this tension where um, you want to tell me about it because you understand me talking about that same problem to other CFOs, I might have something for you. Or you're like, well, it's not one of my problems, should it be, right? Because if my, all my other peers are working on this, why not me, right? So it's a very interesting process. It's part of the, of the sales guides that we've built um, uh, as part of this process. And on step three, I think it's something we insist a lot with the Microsoft sellers we train is how they need to stop what's called selling solo and start selling with you guys. And uh, we trained a bunch of partners, one-one uh, with this methodology. The number one thing they told us is that I'm frustrated working with Microsoft because you guys bring me super late in the deal, right? You have all these conversations with the customers, and once you're at like 60% sell stage, then you talk to me and say, okay, this customer wants to buy some measure. Why don't you do a POC with them and show them how it works, right? And all of these partners are like, well, okay, but I could have made that deal way bigger than it is today if you brought me up at like 10% sell stage instead of bringing me up at 60%, right? And this methodology is all about how we bring partners at like a minus 20% sell stage if you're Microsoft, or how you guys don't really need Microsoft to go do this on your own and bring Microsoft when you really need to, right? So uh, as part of the, of, of the, we have a stuff slide we'll cover next, uh, but as part of the content that we have built for you um, in this methodology, you have these like tools on how you uh, follow up on deals and how you uh, continue that conversation and the relationship you started to build. Yep, and what we usually do is we usually do this as a three hour workshop session. And I know what you guys are saying, thank God we didn't have to do that one today. But what we do is we're gonna give you the exact same tools and the exact same training that we've given to all Microsoft sellers. So everybody has the same thing. Everybody's speaking from the same language. Everybody is trying to understand those business pain points the same way. And for you all who are trying to manage sales organizations or be sales organizations, you don't have to reinvent the wheel from scratch, okay? So we're, we're gonna get you started. Do you guys have training wheels in the UK? Like when your little kid's trying to ride a bike, they, have little, they probably have a catchier name than training wheels. We, Stabilizers, okay, ours is better, training wheels. So you have training wheels so you don't fall off your bike when you're a little kid. And that's a little bit of what this is. We're gonna give you all of this stuff, which Christoph will go over in a, in a second, and we'll go through it super fast. And we're gonna give you online training, which is our three hour seminar, super fun and interesting. Uh, but it's all baked into about an hour and 15 minutes. And you can have all of your sellers go through that so you know exactly what they've, they've been through. They practice having those conversations. We give them guidance on that LinkedIn sales navigator. Hey, here's how you can profile an account. Here's some tips of how to update your profile so it doesn't just look like your resume, which is what most of us have. And we're gonna get you started. Now what you're gonna find is, as you have these conversations, you're gonna find ones that work better for you. So these guys over here that are in industry, right, that you're, you're vertically aligned, you're gonna find, oh, there's a really super cool retail conversation that I wanna have around uh, point of sale and customer engagement on the floor of the retail experience. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. And I'm gonna build a case study and I'm gonna build a conversation guide just for that. We're not gonna do that for you, you're gonna do it. But we're gonna get you started and you can see that framework, but our main thing is we can get you started you can walk out with this on Monday morning and have a, a relatively good conversation with the four roles that we've outlined. VP of sales, head of marketing, head of um, 
head of sales, head of marketing, head of HR, and CFO. So that would be enough to get you started. And we'll give you some email templates. What do I do about my IT contact? I don't want to go around him. Absolutely. You want to go through him and with him. That is our bread and butter. We want to make sure that person doesn't get alienated. And they're the hero that delivers the solution to the business pain, right? So the CFO here, he has this business pain. Here's my, my IT contact. He's the person who's going to deliver that solution for him. Everybody feel good about that? You excited? OK, good. So just covering this like stuff like quickly, right? But um, it, it's located. So if you guys have P-sellers, they can access this resource uh, on the Microsoft network, uh, aka.ms slash beyond IT. Um, That's a good slide to take a picture of, if anybody right? wants to take pictures. If you are uh, managed partners, uh, it's on MPN as well. So just go on MPN and look for like selling beyond IT and you will find all, all that content, right? Like we like to say with Dave, I think it's not necessarily about the content. It's about how do we want to go through a personal transformation as a seller on this market, right? And being a seller in IT these days is not about selling product stuff anymore. It's about selling to the business outcome that the customer might realize and being able to have these business conversations. But in terms of the stuff, like you have like a prep guide, which is just a checklist. So if you're a seller, as you prepare for your first engagement or for a conversation, whether it's on the phone or in person, it's just, a, it's just an aid. It's like a checklist of, did I really do everything uh, that I had to do to make this conversation a success, right? Um, then we have a selection of conversation roles. So on top, you have what we call conversation roles, conversation guides, sorry by role, um, so you'll find a CFO guide, a, a VP of HR guide, a VP of sales guide, and it's all about what are the topics that I need to build in my conversation to have a conversation with a CFO. And the new things we're building, uh, it's all about how to pivot that guidance around a specific set of conversations, right? So Dave illustrated a few minutes ago how uh, we might be scared of having a conversation with a CFO because the CFO might want to ask us about like OPEX versus CAPEX, P&L management, and all the financial technical things that we're not specialists of, right? And actually we realize that no CFO is expecting to have that conversation with us, right? When we come in as, a, as, a, as an IT company, they know we're an IT company, and they, and they know that probably our realm of expertise is, in, is still in there, right? But it's all about how we can have a conversation Let's say you think of uh, something like Azure Disaster Recovery or Site Recovery, how you can have an ASR conversation with an IT person, and how with the CFO you have that same conversation about the same technology, but in a business language, right? So you can have a conversation with a CFO and say, hey, dear CFO, I understand you are in charge of uh, risk management for your, for your company, right? And, and do you know what happens to the offer and the services that you run your business on if they are not available for an hour, a day, a week, right? Most CFOs would be like, oh, okay, well, that's the conversation that is interesting to me. You tap into one of my accountabilities, right? In the end, we still sell, we still sell Azure Site Recovery. It's just how we talk about that product and that solution in a business language, right? And we'll provide you guys with the guidance on how to conduct that conversation without talking about product and about IT stuff. Free. Um, what else? We, we have give here? it to you for free, right? And we have like a set of different email templates, similar to Oracle email. If you guys want to start, reach out or programmatize that a bit, right? In fact, what if we talk to like 100 CFOs uh, next week? Uh, and their proposals as well as like tools, tools you can customize to say, hey, uh, let me leave behind uh, this proposal and how we can uh, work with you, CFO, on business intelligence and understand how you. Uh, get more visibility into the performance of your business. Anything you want to add, Dave, on that one? No. Okay. You did a perfect job. <laughs> Trying. Okay, so I just want to say um, all that content as well as the readiness course. So the readiness course is like a series of videos that a seller can take, right, uh, to, help in, to help them build that skill. So through, through the readiness, they will get the pitch of why it's important for them to develop that skill, how to get started. Uh, we have great conversations with real customers, real CFOs, real VP of sales, 
that tell a seller, this is what I want to hear from you. This is, these are the conversations I want to have with you uh, from different industries and, and, and different markets, uh, as well as like uh, we showed you the bad version of the conversation. We have a good version of the conversation as well as part of the training. Uh, but all, all of that is, is built in a, a, an online course that any partner who has access to MPN can just go to and, and ask your, your, your sellers to consume. Yeah, it's really, it's really cool and it's fairly non microsoft -y. It's one of the, I think it's the number three rated training ever in Microsoft. So it's, it's interesting enough that your salespeople, I don't think, will feel like, oh man, they made me watch that thing. The thing that is super cool is we interviewed some, uh, a CFO, a CIO, and a VP of sales. And we said, actually, say whatever you want. We'll, we'll publish anything. And so some of these guys go, hey, here's why you IT people, I never see you. Here's why I won't ever take a meeting with you. Because you say this, you do this, you do this. Here's the things that I'm interested in and you never talk about. So it's very frank. And I think, the, I think sales teams um, really appreciate sort of that frankness. Like, okay, I get it. I'm not going to be that person who goes in and talks about all that, you know, gigawatts and terabytes and things like that. Right? Good? Okay. We'll buy you a cup of coffee afterward. <laughs> Uh, do you want to go through that quickly? Yeah, let me just talk about this for a minute. And then we, 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 we get it finished a little bit early and you guys can ask questions if you have any. So here's things, if, if, if you were to walk away, I think everybody gets this. And everybody goes, yeah, I want to do it. How do I you know, kind of go about it? It's sort of overwhelming. And if you've made the transition, it's, it's a little scary, right? You're walking off the cliff to some degree, right? And that's... That's the thing. And we are not by any means advocating stopping selling to IT. So make that clear. We're not saying we stop calling on the IT department. We absolutely continue to talk to them. But we need to figure out what that path into those other offices are because that's where the, the money and the power and the control is. Right? How many CIOs ever made the decision? We'll just use CRM as an, another example again. How many CIOs ever made the decision by themselves to buy a CRM system? Exactly zero in the history of the planet Earth. It just, just doesn't ever happen. So we've got to be relevant to those people or else our, our competitors just sweep us away. Okay, just be sure you know what you're talking about before you walk in. And the feedback, um, particularly in the UK, was the more research you do, the better the meeting goes. That sounds obvious, but I'm sort of an advocate of get 80% of the way there and just kind of run on in the door with your hair on fire. And the feedback, um, particularly in the UK, was, hey, the more we prepared, the more we knew about the company, the individual, and the industry, the better that conversation went. And we didn't have to sort of follow up with such a uh, rudimentary conversation the second time. Next. Click. Nice. Um, be relevant, right? We already talked about that. Avoid the product conversation. We usually do this little quiz, which we say, how many worldwide, so out of interviewing about 3,000 sellers, what percentage, we'll do the poll here, what percentage of your customers feel like you're a business advisor versus an IT provider? You can do, this is a percentage. What do you think? You can say it for your own business or you can say what you think the average is. Half? Is that for you guys or is that for, for the industry average? Okay, so half, anybody else? Who said, who said that? 20%? Okay, that's a little closer to the world average. 30%, you're going the wrong direction? It's about 10%. 10%, so 90% of the time, right? 90% of the time, our customers see us as, as, a, as a people selling IT stuff. They I'll, don't... I'll tell these guys my like, uh, French Azure story. Oh, that's a good right? story. Uh, so after we, we, we gave this uh, training uh, in France a few months ago, uh, we get a call from one of the sellers there and it was like, okay, um, I need your help guys. I, I need to sell Azure to make my number. I need to sell Azure into that account. And the CIO is not a big cloud uh, fanatic. So uh, how would you coach me? How would you help me uh, have a business conversation beyond IT to just pitch Azure? To that account, right? And we worked with him, and he was like, "I really need to close that deal before the, before the end of the quarter, so uh, help me." And we just like work with him. He has a few conversations with uh, the chief marketing officer. Uh, chief marketing officer was interested, didn't go anywhere, right? And he ended up he ended up closing his quarter, not selling 
uh, the Azure dollars he needed to sell, right? Uh, but four months later, uh, that, that chief marketing officer calls them back and say, hey, you know what? Um, the CEO just dropped this new project on my desk and I was going through this and it made me think of that conversation we had a while back. And I would really uh, like to get your feedback on how I should tackle this. And since then, they're the biggest uh, Azure customer in France. Right? Uh, and, but by, by being able to like, talk the language of the BDM, by being able to build their, their relevancy in terms of like, hey, I understand your business, I understand your challenges, I make you understand that I have a solution for that, right? Uh, then he became the business advisor of the customers to pick up their phone and say, okay, how would you tackle this, right? And, and that's exactly the situation we want to be in because instead of getting into these like small projects we want, we want to close on a short-term basis, we're part, we're in the loop of this, of this bigger, richer uh, and, and more uh, projects that have bigger visibility within our, our customer organizations. Yeah, so. if you think about the, the sales stages, 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, think of this as like minus 20%, right? Because you know that this is happening with your competitors. How many times have you responded to an RFP and sort of halfway through the RFP you realize it was written by your competitor, right? Why is that? And why is that that they got to do that and you didn't even know about it? Well, it's because they were in there having a conversation when it was just a pain. It wasn't a project yet. It was just a, gosh, if I could ever get this recruiting thing figured out, if I could ever get all my salespeople, and when I reorganize my territories with my salespeople, I always lose my best salesperson because they're dissatisfied with how their compensation is adversely affected. It's driving me crazy. Now, did I describe anything that had to do with tech? No. But is every one of those problems a tech solution? Absolutely. Here, let's buzz through these. Listen, this is what we don't do. We go in and we talk about everything we have and everything we want to sell and what the product does. And you saw me do it in the thing. The other thing that we do is when we get pretty good at this process that we're talking about right here is we're even worse because we sort of show up and want to discuss every business problem that's ever hit the planet Earth. So listening to what these folks have to say and really being able to ask intelligent, disruptive, challenging questions is a skill. Buy the challenger sales, give it to your salespeople, it will change lives. Co-engage, this is more for the Microsoft sellers than for us. We want them to get you in right at the beginning. If we can get you in the beginning, the deals get bigger, you're happier, you're making more money, the Microsoft salespeople can go find more goodies to, to bring to you and everybody benefits. So that's more for them but for us. But know that they've been given that directive. So if, if they're not doing that, you can kind of crack them in the head. Or yeah, that would be my personal ask, right? Whoever you're working with at Microsoft, the PSCs or the account managers on the accounts are trying to uh, penetrate, challenge these guys on doing this, right? If this is something you want to do and you're like, I want to go talk to the CMO about that project, right? Or I'm trying to secure that big renewal and before the CFO is a blocker to that decision. I want to go talk to the CFO so he understands the value, the business value of uh, renewing that deal. Whatever, whatever the customer and, and the deal situation is, challenge your Microsoft guys on, on like doing this with you. Yeah, and if you get it and they aren't quite there, teach them. We heard a really good best practice, which is the uh, BDM Roadshow. So I'm the sales manager and I want to go travel with you for a week of sales calls and, my, and your Microsoft person and we're going to not see any IT people for a week. Full week of sales calls and let's not see any IT people. Uh, okay, that's going to challenge my thinking as a salesperson about how I think about my accounts. Last one. Network. So we tend to think this is kind of self-evident. Network, oh yeah, that's great. I'm going to talk to the CFO or talk to the IT guy and then ask him to introduce me to the CFO. Here's how I think of it a little bit differently is I talk to the CFO and I say, CFO, what? God, I'm picking on you all day. Vice President of Sales, I'm going to pick on you. You know, tell me what organizations you work in. Tell me some of your, um, do you think there's anybody else that you know that would have similar kinds of pain points that you do that maybe I could talk to them? Is there, is there an organization that you know of that would need a speaker or um, would be interested in, in sort of solving blanket issues. Oh yeah, I'm in the sellers, sales managers round table. We go play golf and smoke cigars all day. It's awesome. You should come talk to us or you should, I should introduce you to that. Use every opportunity for that connection. The other thing I would say is the scariest thing for every single salesperson is going to be that first sales call, right? And generally people who are in sales management, 
me and you, we think we're great at this and we're not that great at this, right? We, we're just as okay as everybody else when we're just starting out. So here's a secret weapon, is have a salesperson go in and have, don't turn it into a sales call, but have a conversation with the CFO. And I would call up and say, hey, Mr. CFO, I am, um, you know, you know me and we've been doing business together for a long time and I'm starting to talk to people in your position throughout my accounts. I wonder if you might just spend 15 or 20 minutes with me. I'd like to learn a little bit about your position and kind of what you do and ask you a few questions. No one ever says no. And now as a salesperson, I have 15 or 20 minutes to talk to a real CFO and ask him, everything in the world and say, you know, these are kind of the conversations. I'm starting to talk to other CFOs. I want to talk about disconnected internal processes, about, you know, how do they get actionable business intelligence about all the information that's coming into their business. Are those, do those seem like the thing to do? What you're going to find is immediately that person's going to say, yeah, you know, that does make sense, but the other one doesn't. What I really think about is blah. That salesperson has now had their very first sales call in a very safe environment, gotten extremely good advice in a non-threatening way. And we don't want to trick them and go, okay, well, well, let's talk about link. We want to keep, be very respectful of that and say, you know, would it be okay if in about, you know, four or five months I came back after I've tried this a few more times and I, I could ask your advice about, you know, how it's going? Oh, sure, no problem. Do that with all those positions. And if I have three of those informational meetings with three CFOs, whew, I'm really pretty good. Right on my first sales call, I've now had three or four conversations with CFOs. So that's a really good thing to get people started and it doesn't scare them to death. Right, so just to conclude our, our, our short overview today, uh, our, our ask is say, A, like get your sellers to look at this training, right? Give us feedback with Dave, so uh, you know who we are, you know where we live, so uh, if you feel like your, your, your sellers have been consuming this, was good to them, let us know. If you think it's missing some points, uh, you need more of this, more of that, let us know. Uh, all the, all, all the, the whole course is on MPN. Uh, it's on the AKS, uh, aka.ms beyond IT for the P sellers. Uh, not only the course is on MPN, but also all the collateral, all these like conversation guides and uh, the checklist for the, the call preparation, the BDM proposals, etc. Everything is on the MPN site. And, 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 and of course, challenge your Microsoft guys to do this. this is, this is really a big, a big important strategy for Microsoft. So these guys will talk to you about this if, if they haven't started to do that. Uh, but we really think that being an IT professional on this market these days, uh, that's a critical skill to have, right? So let's do ourselves a favor. Let's build that skill. So we, we become the, the, the channel in the IT industry that's the best at doing that. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate your coming. Thank you.